They say, never let the truth get in the way of a good story. Well, in the world of the Premier League, there's no shortage of incredible stories to be told. And today, we're embarking on a journey. A journey through time, through goals, through heartbreaks and triumphs. Welcome, one and all, my fellow footy enthusiasts, to a unique odyssey. A rewind button on the Premier League. Where we relive every moment, every kick, every goal, every mullet, every tash, every garish kit, every brilliant kit. Just as it happens. From the epic rivalries to the underdog tales, from the world class saves to the breathtaking goals, we're diving into the beautiful game like nobody's ever done before. We'll do all the hard work for you. All you have to do is grab a brew and settle down. We'll walk alongside the legend of the past and witness a rise of the future stars. We'll feel the roar of the crowds and the silence of the stadiums. We're not just watching history, we're reliving it. So, get ready for a journey like no other. We're going back to where it all began. One day at a time, one game at a time, one week at a time. The Premier League, from its humble beginnings to the grand stage it is today, is a story that deserves to be told. My name's Michael. And I'm Ben. And we invite you to join us on this epic voyage through the annals of football history. Buckle up. It's going to be a ride you don't want to miss. Settle down. Let's relive the league. So, a quick disclaimer for all the Liverpool fans that will be piping up. We are aware that history started before 1992, but this is Premier League and Premier League only. Well, it's been a couple of weeks in the making then, Mike. Yeah, a fair few, mate. Fair few. Yeah, and you've been building this up very nicely on Twitter. Yeah, who'd have thought uh, people would be into Brian Dean t-shirts and Chris Kawamba mugs. It's uh, it's barmy, barmy. Wow. Full credit to you for all the editing. Thank you very much. Thank to, you very much. To create the full 90s effect. Yeah, that's the... That's the end of the reason we had to push back a week, basically, because it's very hard to... to edit as if you're in 1992 and we've got that across for you, because... Yeah. Well, when you came up to me with this idea, I never saw us getting to this point where we are today. Pipe dream. To relive our childhood, look yeah, back at all them iconic moments, legendary players, it's going to be a great journey to recreate together. For me, modern football, Here you go. It's, it's not football. VAR was the final nail in the coffin. To have to sit and wait two to three minutes, ten different camera angles, then asking the on-field ref to go and look at a monitor at the same incident, nah, the game has gone. So let's go back and let's relive the league. We begin our journey at Bramall Lane in Sheffield, where Manchester United are the visitors against Sheffield United. Dave Bassett begins the season with Simon Tracy in goal, Carl Bradshaw, David Barnes, Paul Beasley and Alan McCleary at the back, Kevin Gage, John Gannon, Glyn Hodges, Mike Lake in midfield, with Alan Cork and Super Brian Dean up front. And the visitors line up with Peter Schmeichel in goal, Dennis Irwin, Gary Pallister, Steve Bruce and Clayton Blackmore at the back, Darren Ferguson, Ryan Giggs, Paul Ince and Andre Kanchelskis in midfield, with Brian McClare and Mark Hughes up front. And this is Fergie's seventh year in charge of United. They did sign Dion Dublin in the summer from Cambridge, but he's not in the lineup today. Mark Hughes is preferred. And on to Sheffield United. They got the highest finish in the uh, top flight for 17 years last year, finishing ninth. 
and they did also do the double over their arch rivals Sheffield Wednesday. You've got to think it was a frustrating transfer window really for Man U. Missed out on Alan Shearer who went to Blackburn. They did try signing Stuart Pearce and Andy Townsend but they had to make do with Dion Dublin. Alex Ferguson was beginning to change the tide a bit at Manchester United having not won the title for around 26 years and he wasn't one to embrace the cultural changes in football that ones that Sky were looking to bring. He was Lee Sharp with his dances etc. So imagine his fume when he turned up in August to Sheffield in Yorkshire and there was hundreds of blokes dressed as Santa. Dave Bassett swiftly removed his heart and beard just in time for Sheffield United to kick the game off. And with barely even time on the clock, Sheffield United tried a long pump forward which went round the back, which was swiftly dealt with by Gary Pallister. Throw me to Sheffield United, five minutes gone. A long throw in there, looking to put it in deep, and a lovely flick on by the United defender straight to Brian Dean, who finishes first time with a lovely header, becoming the all time Premier League record goal scorer. Please go to the Twitter account and show your love for Brian. I know he likes these t shirts. There isn't many men who can claim this accolade throughout any parts of the career, but this man, he truly can. I can hear it now. Dad, how good was Brian Dean? I'll save you a job, Dad. Watch this. Style, strength and class. He had everything. England's future. Gary Pallister soon did wonders for Alex Ferguson's blood pressure and his blushes were just saved by a post and a big Dane. But I wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of that. Sheffield United taking a somewhat unexpected lead into the break. And not long into the second half, 54-year-old Alan Cox, manufacturer's warranty on his knee ligaments were tested and then Gary Pallister came through him like last night's Vindaloo and obviously Peter Schmeichel saw nothing but there was everything to be seen. Amazingly, uh, no red card. Anyway, big Brian Dean up against European champion Peter Schmeichel sends him the wrong way, 2-0 to the blades, certainly three points, or is it? Mark Hughes with a late consolation there from a Peter Schmeichel long ball proving he can finish from absolutely anywhere. And that's it, 2-1 to Sheffield United and a great start in the season for the Blades and an even better one for Brian Dean. Unfortunately though, for Manchester United, Alex Ferguson was fuming. After the game, he went on a blind tirade against today's referee Brian Hill, who was a school teacher from Kettering. He said, and I quote, there is always trouble when he referees our games. At Wimbledon three years ago, we turned down three claims for penalties. Then, there was further trouble when we played Forrest. We've not had him since, and we had no notification he was going to referee this match. We didn't find out till today. However, the list of appointments for the referees was issued weeks ago, and clearly shared Hill for today's game. Ferguson then went on to say, we don't want him to referee any more of our games. I think when Sheffield United saw who the ref was, they gave him a bit of a lift. Strong words, Alex. But Mr. Ferguson, I have the footage, I have the proof, and in my opinion, you don't have a leg to stand on. You be the judge. It's bloody dived, ref! It's dived! Oh, get up, get dive and get. It's bloody dived. At uh, Highbury, we have Arsenal hosts in Norwich City, and today's referee is Alan Gunn. No relation to Brian. Hopefully. Arsenal line up with David Seaman in goal and the familiar back four of Adams, Ball, Dixon and Winterburn. A midfield of David Hillier, John Jensen, Anders Limpar and Paul Merson with Kevin Campbell and Alan Smith up front. Mike Walker went with an 11 off. Brian Gunn, Mark Bowen, Ian Culverhouse, Ian Butterworth, John Polston and Rob Newman across the back. David Phillips and Rule Fox on the wings. Jeremy Goss and Gary Mixon in the middle with Chris Sutton up top. Arsenal, somehow, book his favourite after finishing fourth last season. Probably something to do with signing John Jensen, the European Championship winner from the summer. Norwich, one of the bookies' favourites to get relegated this season. Mike Walker in charge. Most notable signing in the summer was Mark Robbins, after being pushed down the pecking order by Dion Dublin. He had a frustrating season last season for Man United, only making two league appearances. 
Arsenal had recently begun a £22 million redevelopment of the North Bank stand. Known for the atmosphere at Arsenal and the noise of the crowd and a fear of no atmosphere, Arsenal installed a renter crowd, a £150,000 mural behind the goal. Arsenal chairman David Dean was accused of trying to be a little bit too clever by creating an intimidating atmosphere with a couple of paintings. It took Arsenal 28 minutes to get off the mark with an expertly placed free kick from Nigel Winterburn headed home by the mighty Steve Bold. It didn't take the title favourites long to double the lead. On 39 minutes, Lee Dixon put in a decent crossing from the right. Good touch from Kevin Campbell, swivel, first time finish. 2-0. No more of this, 1-0 to the Arsenal. The title favourites taking a comfortable 2-0 lead into half-time. And with Arsenal's famous back five of Seaman, Winterburn, Bold, Adams and Dixon, they were surely safe to take the three points home. But master tactician and producer of beautiful goalkeepers, Mike Walker, had an ace up his sleeve, and that ace was one of Alex Ferguson's cast-offs. He brought him on just after half-time with the simple instruction of go get us two goals. And 10 minutes after coming on, a free kick was whipped in. Mark Robbins was the first to meet it, 2-1. And not being one to kill the rumours about his inability to catch crosses at the back post, Seaman came rushing out at one, and Phillips made it 2-2. Calamity. Then Rule Fox was played out down the wing. There's not much things happen except a goal when Rule Fox runs down that wing. 3 2. And there was still time for Tony Adams to show his great leadership skills by making Steve Bold and David Seaman feel oh, a little bit better about themselves by forgetting how to human wow. and, and, well, David Seaman getting chipped from distance. Calamity. Who's. Yes, that's not all Adams' fault. It's not all on you, Tony. And. Unbelievably, Norwich have won 4 2. The mural didn't work. And master tactician Mike Walker defeated George Graham. We're not here for creating running themes on Real of the League. We have an angry Scottish manager. George Graham slammed his stars for the laughable schoolboy clang as a sorry side toss away a 2 0 lead with just 20 minutes to go. Skipper Tony Adam, Steve Bold and David Seaman all blundered as Arsenal's Premier League title charge started disastrously. George Graham mourned, it was all down to individual mistakes that should have been avoided. I didn't think Norwich gave us any real problems. They didn't create their goals, we did it all for them. It was almost laughable. You don't sound bitter at all, dear George. And Arsenal's title odds went from 2-1 to one to 5-2 to two after that hammering. They are still favourites for the league. Let's see how they get on next week. Crystal Palace finished 10th last season. Yeah, they've got a youthful squad with the likes of Gareth Southgate, Chris Coleman, the hard work of Eddie McAldrick and Jeff Thomas in the middle, and two very exciting youngsters that I imagine will go a very long way in the game, in John Solarco and George and Dan. And finally, Blackburn were also promoted last season. At no surprise, due to the huge wealth of the owner, Jack Walker. Yeah, the uh, wallop, the British transfer fee on Alan Shearer, they're potentially the problem, aren't they? These are the kind of things that teams like Manchester City were scared of, saying people are just going to come in and buy the way to the top. And hard-working teams like Man City are going to find it hard to prosper. Let's see how that turns out. Crystal Palace started the season with Nigel Martin in goal, Chris Coleman, John Humphrey, Gareth Southgate, Eric Gunn and Richard Shaw at back. Andy Thorne, Eddie McGoldrick, John Salako and Jeff Thomas in the field and Mark Wright up front. And Blackburn started with whoever they just wanted to buy. So far Blackburn had spent £13 million in creating their empire. They had a new star in Alan Shearer. Crystal Palace had their own hot young superstar in John Salako. And he played another starring role at the goal feast before eventually being substituted. In the 37th minute, Mark Bright gave Palace the lead on Blackburn's first game back in the top flight for 26 years. But 
five minutes later, Mike Newell's perfect left wing cross found £1.3 million signing Stuart Ripley and his header gave Nigel Martin no chance, making the new signing an idol to the Rovers fans immediately. Kids, pay attention, because what's about to happen is unbelievable. Gareth Southgate blasted a glorious 30 yard shot past Bobby Mims to put Palace back in the lead. Then in step Shearer. In the 66th minute, from Mike Neal's nod down, Shearer sent a superb rising drive past Nigel Martin. And then Shearer put Blackbird in front with just eight minutes to go. He chased down any old penny down the dark alley down the left wing, cut inside and from 30 yards bent one past Nigel Martin, leaving him helpless. Blackburn 3-2 up, the new record signing, already paying back the transfer fee. Then in the last minute, Crystal Palace's two substitutes combined. Simon Roger whipping in a free kick and Simon Osborne meeting the cross and heading it home to equalise. 3-3. Limbs going everywhere. A potential contender for earliest Premier League limbs. All square at Sellers Park, 3-3. Blackburn can't even buy a win. The Earl, Paul Miller and Laurie Sanchez in midfield and Andy Clark and Dean Holdsworth up front. One of the biggest changes and advancements in the game in 1992 was the introduction of the back pass rule. I don't know what to do! I don't know what to do! Two things, a lot of comedy moments and goalkeepers not having a clue what to do. Including today, Wimbledon blamed the loss on defender Roger Joseph not being able to tactically play it back to the goalkeeper to pick it up. Leaving Lee Chapman to open the scoring for Lee. Never known for his goals, Warren Barton tries his luck from about 45 yards and it goes over, over, and it goes over Lukic's head and into the back of the net. But they're the champions of England because they never give up. The ball falls perfectly to Lee Chapman on the edge of the area and there's only one way that is going to end. In the back of the net, brilliant start for Leeds in the opening game of the season. 2-1 win over Wimbledon. Chelsea, 14th place finish last season, Ian Portfield as manager. Oldham, one of the bookies' favourites to be relegated, finished 17th last season. Chelsea line up today with Dave Besson in goal, Steve Clark, Mal Donaghy, Gareth Hall and Paul Elliott in defence. Vinny Jones, Damian Matthew, Graham Stewart and Andy Townsend in midfield. And new signings, Robert Fleck and Mick Harford up front. Joe Royal has selected John Hallworth in goal, Andy Barlow, Gunnar Haller, Richard Jobson and Steve Redmond in defence, Paul Bernard, Nick Henry and Mike Milligan in midfield, with Ian Marshall, Roger Palmer and Graham Sharp up front. Quite unlike Chelsea this summer, they were quite erratic in the transfer market, making four signings alone this week. Not a great deal to report from Stamford Bridge today, but Chelsea thought they'd nicked a winner in the 84th minute when new star signing Mick Harford did this. Thwack! Stop bins! Oosh. Little did Chelsea know that Oldham's man of the match today would be their own oh keeper, Dave no. Besson. And provided a gift for Nick Henry. Not that you can provide a 50 yard gift, the lads done well to finish that from there. Quite the standard game at Stamford Bridge today. A point apiece. So a disappointing season last year for Southampton, finishing 16th, but also selling Alan Shearer in the summer. So no one really knows what to expect from them this year. Matt, this is the eight. Tottenham, very underwhelming season last year, losing 20 games, but they have recruited well. Neil Ruddock, Darren Anderton, Jason Cundy. Let's see what they can bring. They'll just always be Spurs. Southampton lineup with Tim Flowers in goal, Jason Dodd, Mickey Adams, Francis Benali and Richard Hall at back, Steve Wood, Glenn Cockrell, Terry Hurlock and Matt Letizier in midfield, with Kerry Dixon and David Speedy up front. 
Livermore has gone with Ian Walker in goal, Terry Fennick, Jason Cundy, Neil Rudd and Justin Edinburgh at the back, Paul Allen, new signing Darren Anderton, David Howells, Finney Samways in midfield, with Andy Turner and Gordon Jury up front. But of course, notable absences include Gary Lineker and Paul Gascoigne. One of the summer's biggest spenders, Tottenham Hotspur, of course, financially backed by Amstrad's Alan Sugar, who may or may not have benefited and made a few quid off the sale of an extra couple satellite dishes off the back of the deal for the Premier League. Forcing the public into mass panic purchases of garish satellite dishes to stick on the side of your houses up and down the country just to get your football fix. Oh yeah, Tottenham, they played away at Southampton at the Dell and uh, it was nil nil. There was a bit of a scramble with a shot or two and then Ian Walker did a save and were really green and pretty. Um, yeah, nil nil. Coventry. Escaped relegation by the skin of their teeth last season. Bobby Gold in charge. Surely he knows he's got a tough job on his hands. Newly promoted Middlesbrough. Finished second to gain promotion last season. Lenny Lawrence in charge. With new signing on the wing. Tommy Wright. For the first game of the season, Bobby Gold opted with Steve Grizzinich in goal. Peter Atherton, Kenny Sanson, Andy Pearce and Teddy Fleming at the back. Mick Ginn, Lee Hurst, Stuart Robson, David Smith in midfield with Robert Rosario and Big John Williams up front. And Lenny Lawrence has gone with Stephen Pearce in goal, Alan Kernahan, Chris Morris, Derek White and Jimmy Phillips at the back, Robbie Musto, Andy Peake and Tommy Wright in the midfield with John Hendry, Willie Faulkner and Paul Wilkinson up front. Coventry summer signing from Swansea, John Williams, only needed 10 minutes to open his account for the club. 1-0 to Coventry. Great example of centre forward player with Robert Rosario duping all the defenders here so Smith can nip in at the back post and make it 2-0. And Middlesbrough came to life in the 63rd minute when Paul Wilkinson ran onto Faulkner's clever through ball as he lifted the ball over Steve Grizzovic who was having a blinding game and made a good few saves so far. 2-1 to Coventry. Bernie Slaven came off the bench for Middlesbrough to try and cause a bit of trouble and had a goal disallowed with a minute of coming on. So not only have Coventry got the fastest postman in history, they've started the 92-93 season with three points at home. Everton, 13th last season, leaving it very late to bring in their summer signing of Paul Rideout, who only joined yesterday. Great season last year for Chef Wednesday, finishing third, they've boosted the attacking ranks, signing Chris Waddle from Marseille for a million pounds. They're going to win the league. Trevor Francis has gone with Chris Woods in goal, Phil King, Roland Nielsen, Nigel Pearson and Paul Warhurst at the back, Graham Hyde, Super Carlton Palmer, Chris Waddle and Nigel Worthington in midfield and David Hurst and Paul Williams up front. Everton start with Neville Southall in goal. Gary Ablett, Andy Hinchcliffe, Dave Watson and Matt Jackson at the back. Peter Beagry, John Eberle, Barry Harden, Mark Ward in the middle. With Peter Beardsley and Paul Rideout up front. The day after joining. And it was Sheffield Wednesday who started the stronger. With Nigel Pearson taking advantage of the fumble by Neville Southall in goal. And then disaster struck. Star signing Chris Waddle schnebs his knee on the opening game of the season and will be out for several weeks. Silky moves from the Messi of the 90s, Peter Beardsley. He whips the ball in and the ball somehow falls perfectly for Barry Horn, who finds the back of the net and the equaliser for Everton. As always, not exactly the most riveting encounter with Everton involved. A nice 1 1 draw to start the season. Ipswich Town ended their six year absence from the top flight by winning the title last season and gaining promotion. Yep, Chris Kawami for top goal scorer for me. And this is Aston Villa's sixth consecutive season in the top flight, seventh place finish last season, big run as manager. And he's after Dean Saunders to put up top as well. Could be dangerous. Ipswich is starting 11. Craig Forrest, David Linnigan, Phil Whelan, Neil Thompson, Jason Gazelle, Gavin Johnson, 
Mickey Stockwell, John Walk, Geraint Williams, Paul Goddard, and Chris Kiwamia. And Big Ron has selected Nigel Spinking Goal, Earl Barrett, Steve Staunton, Sean Taylor, and Paul McGrath at the back, Steve Froggett, Ray Houghton, Gary Parker, and Kevin Richardson in the middle, with Daly and Atkinson and the superb Tony Daly up front. The outstanding moment in this match was provided in the 33rd minute by Gavin Johnson, 21 years old, a local Suffolk youngster from Stowmarket. The mistake by village teenager Steve Froggett left Johnson clear 30 yards out, and the midfielder calmly hammered a shot past a startled Nigel Spink. Apart from the mistake, Frogger played his full part in Villa's second half fight back, which brought them a deserved draw with Dale and Atkinson, who used to play for Ipswich Town, got involved in a bit of a tussle, and then after Cyril Regis expertly played him across, knocked it in at the back post. Notts Forest. Oh, Nottingham Forest, Ben. Oh, sorry, yeah, Nottingham yeah, sorry, Forest. Sorry. Eighth last season, Brian Clough in charge, Roy Keane, club captain Stuart Pearce, Teddy Sheringham up top, surely make them in for a chance of the title. Liverpool, last season's FA Cup winners. <laughs> There's not much else to report on Liverpool at this time. And Brian Clough picked a starting lineup of Mark Crossley, Brian Law, Stuart Pearce, Steve Chettle, Nigel Clough, Gary Crosby, Scott Gemmell, Roy Keane, Terry Wilson, Ian Warren, and Teddy Sheringham. And the man known just as much for his tash as his tactical prowess, Graham Souness, has gone with David James in goal, David Burrows, Mark Wright, Nick Tanner and Steve Nicholl at the back, Michael Thomas, Ronnie Whelan and Mark Walters in the middle, with Paul Stewart, Ian Rush and Dean Saunders up front. But this was Sky Sports' first Super Sunday. And Sky were legitimately within the rights to market this as a fight between European giants. There's only one goal in the game today though, but what a goal to catch on Sky's cameras as Teddy Sheringham ran down the left wing, cut inside on his right and expertly bent it past David James. 1-0 to Nottingham Forest. David James was deputising for Bruce Grobelar who's going through a bit of a squabble regarding his national team Zimbabwe in the African Cup of Nations. Nottingham Forest, Irish youngster Roy Keane looking to carry on impressing with his pace, drive and goal scoring prowess. They have one or two chances, Dean Saunders laying it here, Michael Thomas, who ran in towards goal and shot, but couldn't get past the stubborn Mark Cross. We still had a little bit of time though for David James to show everybody what his own interpretation of Grievous Bodily Arm is. The bout between the two European giants ended in a drab, 1-0. Saturday. Uh, I suppose. I hope you enjoyed it. Join us tomorrow for Monday Night Football. Now to Monday, the 17th of August, 1992, and the launch of Sky's Monday Night Football. Woo! A whole new ball game. Fourth Monday Night Football. Mm -hmm. Exclusively live, Manchester City versus Queens Park Rangers. Association with Fosters. Uh, Tonight, Manchester City, determined to bring back the glory days, take on the talented Queen's Park Rangers, who've never won at Main Road. Will they break their duck tonight? Genuinely though, if this isn't getting your goosebumps bumping, <laughs> you've got unbumpable geese mm -hmm. and you're probably going to need a doctor. Right, let's get the stats and the lineups and bring you all the action. Manchester City, fifth last season, not happy with this new structure of the Premier League. Peter Reid will be out to steal that spotlight from their neighbours United. How will they do? I'm going to be really intrigued by this. I think it's going to be a great story and see how Man City, the promise, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to do this honestly. They're going to do it proudly. I think these are going to be the team to watch as as the people's underdog. And with Peter Reid in charge, it's perfect. Hard work. Action. Queens Park Rangers finished mid-table in the top flight last season. 
Jerry Francis is manager again this year. He's only Ray Wilkins and Les Ferdinand. And <laughs> Gary Penrose. And of course, with Sky's advancements in the game, it was surely going to be a test of your granddad's patience. Here's how they delivered the match ball today. Games gone, lad. After he eventually found their way out from behind the uh, the Arsenal you know, cast. <laughs> And there he is, Mr. Richard Keyes himself. And as he proudly announces that Monday is now officially part of the weekend, we find out exactly the advantages Sky are going to bring to our football coverage. It's cheerleaders, lads. Woo! Lads, lads, lads. £300 million. A couple of bomb bombs. Here we go. The Sky Revolution has begun. And of course, they're no ordinary cheerleaders. These are the Sky Strikers. The NFL has nothing on the Premier League. Sky Strikers next to me, Chris Waddle and uh, Andy Gray. Impressed with what was in the centre circle, boys. Yeah, hey, boys. I forgot about the game was on, I said, well, I just watched it. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy, yes. An absolute classic bit of 1992 level banter there. Thanks, just Leaving Chris fantastic. Waddle in the most awkward spot, clearly indicating with his eyes that you know my missus is watching, Richard. What are you asking that for? Another out of this world advancement that Sky brought with the formation of the Premier League is the beautiful, vibrant, amazing new colourful kits for referees. Amazing. Even so much as asking today's referee, Martin Bodenham, live on television, what colour kit he's wearing today. I've seen some natty outfits so far from the natty referees. Outfits. What, uh, what colour tonight? Being green tonight. Martin Bodenham, our match official. And it was this exact moment where your granddad first officially said, the game's gone. Right, we've covered the build-up. We've had the dancers. We've ascertained what colour Good word. Yellow Card Wafter's going to wear. Let's jump right in to the action at Main Road. At Main Road, Queen's Park Rangers were the visitors against the working class Manchester City. And for today's game, Peter Reid's gone with Tony Corton in goal, Andy Hill, Ian Brightwell, Keith Curl and Michelle Bonk at the back, Fitzroy Simpson and Steve McMahon in the middle, David White and Rick Holden on the wings, with Paul Lake and Nal Quinn up front, and on the bench, Martin Maggotson, Gary Flickcroft and Mike Sherrin. And Jerry Francis has gone with Jan Stesch Allen Gold, Alan McDonald, Darren Peacock, David Bardsing, Clive Wilson at the back, Andy Impey and Ray Wilkins in the middle, Andy Sinton and Ian Holloway on the wings, with Les Ferdinand and Dennis yeah, Bailey up front. The potential changes for QPR are Tony Roberts, Danny Maddox, and Gary Thompson. Now the players arrive, but there's Jerry Francis in what is probably the most 90 deep down point. Of a football team arriving. Look at the ties, the kit on Andy and Bray. Oh, this is a gold mine, isn't it? Andy Simpson. Oh, look at them all coming good, aren't they? It's Gary. Super Gary Penrice. The beloved Gary Penrice. And the man himself, Mr. Ray Wilkins, oozes class. Queen's Park Rangers had a diamond on the wing, and that diamond is named Andy Simpson. The previous season, Manchester City had tried to purchase Andy Simpson and tried to pay £1.5 million for his service. Yeah, well, this was rejected, and let's hope for Manchester City's sake it doesn't come back to harm them. Equally so, Manchester City had their own diamond on the wing in David White. And you can clearly see what Peter Reid was thinking with England's left and right wing sorted for years to come. City's first chance came from Nal Quinn, who unleashed an absolute thunder given <laughs> from about 45 yards after a world famous Tony Cotton one. City began clearly the better side. Some great link up play by Nal Quinn and Rick Holden down the left. The new £900,000 signing for Holden, looking to impress after falling out with Joe Royal in the summer. And a great cross on his left peg. Untypically, Jan Steschal getting in a pickle under pressure. Oh, wow. Niall Quinn with the first time shot. Oh, Quinn. And look at the pace of David White there to knock it into the back post. What a player. 1 0 City, 37 minutes gone. 
Jan Steskow taking umbrage at the fact that they've gone behind despite him doing his best to clean out his own defenders. City taking the lead quite comfortably into half time with zero to little effort really from QPR. Jerry Francis must have handed out some serious single finger drifters and orange segments at half time because two minutes after the break, Andy Sinton did this. Header out from Curl, straight to Ray Wilkins. Great pass to Sinton, who hammers one into the top bins past the helpless Steshko. Which is great news for England fans, leaving them in no doubt that they're in safe hands on that left side for many years to come. City were playing an adventurous 4 2 4 this week, which relied heavily on the work ethic of aging warrior Steve McMahon. It's 56. He was accompanied in midfield by the young exuberance of Fitzroy Simpson, who was denied a late winner by a brilliant save by Steshka. As Jerry Francis described as out of his mouth. The man who got the assist for QPR, Ray Wilkins, and of course, booed and jeered for the entirety of the game due to his connection with Manchester United, came closest to getting a winner for Queen's Park Rangers, but for an excellent save from Tony Cotton. That brings an end to the David White and Andy Sinton show. 1-1. One, one. Well, the league table doesn't take much reading after one week, so we won't get into it too much. Obviously, we will do that on a weekly basis. As I touched on in the Monday night football game between Man City and the other team, can't remember who it was now. QPR. Um, QPR, there you go. There was, the match ball was delivered by Parachute. If anyone knows or can put the correct answer in the comments below, what happened with the delivery of the match ball at the Arsenal match involving a Parachute and the Arsenal Euro? Pop it in the comments, if you get the right answer, you can be one of the unofficial, official match sponsors for the next episode. Um, yeah, just quickly as well, we've popped the out, it is an episode one, it is a pilot. Please feel free to get in touch on Twitter for any other ideas or anything at all, and we're always happy to talk. Over to you, Ben. Yep, so if you've listened to us up to now, then surely we are worth a cheeky subscribe to our YouTube channel ready for the next podcast please also join us on twitter if you don't already at premstars hq can and i do a bit about the shop oh yeah so check out our merchandise as well the links in the bio on twitter plenty of legends on there already from the 90s any special requests just get in touch uh yeah yeah right uh, um, see you later bye now